Test, test, check, to check, check, check. Woo! Thankfully, this week is uh, over. And uh, like the uh, Scotch uh, for Dummies were saying, uh, it's been a long week. Uh, I have been out of the game for a while. Last week, I, I've had three different illnesses, which is really kind of crazy. I had um, fought over a bad head cold, fought over acute sinusitis. And then my wife had this idea we should get our flu shot. And of course, of all times I've ever had it, never had an adverse reaction until this last go around. So um, had a really bad case of the, I guess a minor case of the flu um, for two and a half days, uh, this just early this week. So I'm finally out of the woods and feeling a lot better. And uh, thanks so much, Tom, for stopping by. Was uh, really glad to get out of the, the big mess because I was tired of being sick last week. It was horrible in bed all week, didn't get out much at all just to, you know, do the deeds and not even, I didn't even leave the bed just to eat. I just stayed in bed all week. It was so bad. So finally, it's glorious whiskey time. You can't get any better than whiskey time. Hey, Bobby, thanks so much. Uh, for sticking it out. I know you're not feeling very well, but hopefully having a dream with me will make you feel a little bit better. Uh, Bobby, I have not forgot about the old particular. We're going to take a look at that Talisker sometime. I, I will not do it without you, I promise, and uh, we'll have to uh, get into that soon. But this time, I thought, let's do something a little different. Let's go outside of my normal realm of Isla, Campbelltown. I am a big Space Eye fan. Uh, I'm a huge Bob Blair fan. Um, that's probably my favorite. Uh, I like Glen Warrenji. Um, they're pretty good up there. Balvany, I think, is, if I remember correctly, is a Space Side, at least a Highland, if not a Space Side. Um, I like a sweeter, I like fruity. Uh, uh, as long as the flavor is heavy, it's intense. It's got good character. It's not too thin. You know, I'm on board. So I figure let's give a couple um, slurries a try that you don't get, you don't get a lot of props. They don't get a lot of marketing um, out there. A lot of people haven't heard of them before. And um, these particular bottles, I've heard a mixed bag on. And I thought, well, let's let's take a look. They're not too crazy expensive. Uh, I think this first guy, the Krigeliki, I think is how you say it. I, I should have looked it up before I came on board on the air, but uh, Kregelke, I think, um, is how you say it, and it's a 13, which to me is funny, because they use prime numbers uh, for their years. They got the strange, you know, off year uh, that they use, which uh, makes them stand apart. Uh, some people might think it's unlucky, but um, I have heard of this before, and uh, I've always wanted to try it. Not, I never had a reason to until recently. I just wanted to kind of branch out and Try some new things, and then we got the Kragenmore um, Distillers Edition, which uh, you can find. They did have a 12, I think, um, which is the run of the mill, kind of the, the go to. This was a little more. Um, th this one, I think, was about, um, I'm trying to remember, I think it was around 50, something like that, 50 to 60 at the most. This guy's a little more like 70 to 80, uh, but neither one was, was crazy expensive. And uh, I figure, well, you know, it's, it's worth a try and see, you know, what, what we get out of this uh, experience from an Isla Campbelltown palette. Uh, but I do like my space side, so we'll see. We'll start, I think the best shot would be start with the Craig, uh, the Craig Elke, because Craig and Moore looks a little darker. It looks like, I do know it's got port cask influence on it. It's a little, uh, it is older, I believe. Uh, this, this one was... Um, Distilled in 2000, but not bottled in 2013, so it's also 13 years old. Wow, this is lucky night. 13 and 13, not imagine that. Well, either way, I think we'll start. This one seems like it's going to be a lighter one. I could be way off. I've, 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 um, I have had a sn snuck a sample of each one to, just to see what I was kind of in for, but I didn't take any notes down. I just kind of, you know, got a little experience and just make sure it wasn't completely like uh, too much of a surprise, but I do remember this one was, was, was intriguing because it's not like anything I've ever had. That's this one, the Craig Elke 13 stands out from any other space side. It's not like a Bob Blair. It's not like a Delwinia, which that's more of like a Highland, but um, 
Uh, it's not like a Ben Reich. It, it's uh, it stands apart because it's got a nice ABV. Uh, this is a 46, which is you know 48 might be a little better, but you know I'm not gonna bitch too much for 46. I mean that's better than 43. <laughs> So there you go. Um, it's got the E statement. Uh, thinking about, and I, something I did not look too heavily into was, I don't think this is chill filter, but let me take a quick look. No chill filtering on this. Uh, is it colored? Now that, it could be 13. It's iffy. I don't see anything... Regarding that and usually if it's not colored, they're gonna tell you so um, But you know does it taste good? That's uh, when it gets to the dye the e150 thing and I know some of the um, uh, People that are McAllen Delmar uh, fans are get a lot of Beef about the coloring, but you know, it's all it's honestly about the taste and You know, let's just go in neat and see what we get 46 isn't gonna blow you away have a little more nose first. You get this like pine needle. It's very piney, and there's a lot of mint in there too. That's the first two things you get, but it's not. It's not. It doesn't push you away. It's a nice blend of the sweetness of the mint. A little bitterness from the pine, but not bad. You get some apples, some green apples. Big. I mean. Fat green apples, big nice green apples, not sour though. And some uh, pears, vanilla. A little, maybe a little floral, like a, but more like a hay kind of a smell. But a nice brisk, like spring hay, not, that's not musky. It doesn't have a lot of darkness to it. It's not dank. But it's not a. Uh, but there's some spice. I can smell some some actual spice in there. Some sort. I'm sure I'll get it more in the palate. But it's really a nice um, complex meld. And the the since the or the floral slash herbal more herbal than floral is a little more pro, a little more um, in in front of the focus here. The, the sweetness is still there, but it doesn't like, oh, it, it's, it's, it's a nice balance. It's a little nice change to the normal everyday space side. You might get, you know, you get your monkey shoulder blends, you get your Ben Reich tins, you get your bobblers, you get all that, you know, mostly a good balance, but really it's a lot of fruit, a lot of sweets. This has got the fruit, but it's got a lot of other things that are really going on. It makes it more complex and uh, maybe an extra year in, uh, you know, actually an extra three years comparatively to some of these, um, like these 10 year olds, uh, might give a little bit of a boost of, uh, you know, of flavor. Hey, Scotch for Dummies, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Good to see you, Lee. Ah, oh, I haven't talked to Lee in ages. I've been sick for a long time, my friend. I'm good to see you on, on uh, the channel and Rob and Loch Ness and, and all my usuals. Uh, talk for schist for anybody that's in, uh, uh, Norway. Let's have a little sip. <laughs> oh yeah, this is like it, it, it's it's a space side, but it has a lot of island influence to it, and that's because the nice spice that I, I was getting on the nose but you really get on, on the palate is a big splash of white pepper. That's kind of a Talisker esque. I think really appreciate it. It's got a lot of maritime niceness to it. It's not too savory though. It doesn't have that, that seashell, um, dankiness, which you do get from some of these maritime guys, these jokers, you know, that I do like, but this one's more of a, a brighter thing this probably would be a better summer uh, spring summer scotch but it is you know cold november and i'm still i'm still digging it so that's all that matters so um you still get the sweetness the fruits there on the palate those apples and pears 
you get more of a caramelization though, which which really makes it nicely round rounded with a little bit of the toffee note. And mm. it, it, those herbal notes are still there. The mint. It, what what was pine is more now of a um does have a little bit of um it's not mineral thankfully it's not off putting bitterness there is some sort of um pithy rind that comes in the back end like uh, not as sour as lemon almost as sweet as an orange but not quite there i am going to add a little water for lee just because he stopped by <laughs> Lee G says you need to pull some something down off that bling wall. Oh come on, man! I gotta give I gotta give to the to the folks that are just getting into the science, you know, as well. Um, you, you can't expect the guy just to walk in and buy a bottle of, of grooves anymore. I couldn't believe it. Somebody actually tried to sell me a bottle of grooves recently for like three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars. I'm like. Dude, I, I know a place in Maryland I could still walk up and buy that shit for, you know, 90 bucks. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. But, um, but no, no, I mean, some of that, you know, we've, we've done Isla a, a, a lot lately. And I thought, let's, let's have a little fun with, uh, and this is funny because uh, Lee probably remembers back of trying this guy because this is when the first one or two rounds I missed with the Scottish uh, distillery group that I'm in with uh, Lee, Prane, Scott, and Paul. And they were doing it with a guy named, I think his name was Ryan at the time. And um, he was in for a couple rounds and then he had a jet. But uh, thankfully, I, they let me in and uh, I was able to come in round three and, and, and go forward. I'm still trying to catch up with these guys. They've already been through uh, some of these distilleries. I've never tried either one of these before. So I was really, uh, I was into, uh, you know giving it a try this one's a, a real pleasant surprise and i did i did glance at, at um lee's notes i didn't look at his his notes notes but i remember seeing that he gave it like a, a four star i was like damn if he's going to give it a four star it's got to be at least a somewhat good and and you're right on man it's it might not be as good as yeah i'd love to try the i want to try the 23 really bad i might have to uh so this is a great entry level to the distillery, and they have a lot to offer as far as older years, even beyond 23. And they're not crazy priced. It might be worth a gamble on, on this distillery. Um, it's not overly thin, but it's not it's not a heavy dram. It's not as, as viscous as you know some of the nice heavy ones that I do like, but it's not thin. It's in the medium range, I'd say. That pithy bitterness is the only thing that, that that throws me off a little bit on the finish of this. It's not overly dry, but there is some dryness because of all that pepper that, that like splashes in your face when you take a sip of it. But um, well, I, I take it back. It is dry out pretty quickly. It's got a nice little butteriness to the end. You got the orange, almost cream sickly like finish, but um. Wow, it, it does leave you wanting more, but that's what the bottle's for. <laughs> so there you go. And uh, thankfully, it's it's fairly uh, it's fairly full. Pretty nice uh, marketing. Uh, I like they don't go crazy, but they put a little effort into it, make it ni nice looking you know, bottle and uh, canister. But that's not what it's all about. But it is kind of nice to get a nice little presentation. Uh, they don't really go into the cast type that they use on this, which kind of threw me for a spin. They just talk about their warm tubs, um, but nothing like out of the ordinary. They use old-fashioned warm tubs to cool their spirits. But, uh, you know, other than that, I couldn't really find if they use, you know, outside of if they do bourbon casks or any sherries involved with it, which I don't think so. I don't detect anything sherry-like in it. Um I think they just use some really nice barley. Whatever barley they use, I think, makes them stand out. And this, if you're a Dewar's fan, this is the primary juice that's in Dewar's. Now, when I, I will say, um, now I do like a Johnny Walker Black, double black on occasion, 
But if I do a, a, a blend, which I don't normally do unless I have to, like you go to a bar or you're at a party and the only scotch they've got is a blended one, if I got my choice between all of those, including Johnny, sometimes I do like a, a, a doer. So uh, I think that might be why I do like this one a little bit more than some other uh, – seal malts out that are that are used to prior, you know, I know blends like Chivas Brothers and uh oh, what was that guy's name? Perno Richard Ricard, something like that. They do some blends of stuff, but uh this is uh pretty good stuff. Uh Lee's enjoying a heavy smooth amber bourbon and coke. <laughs> Oh, he's going back to basics. And you're complaining about the, the, the juice that I'm bringing out, and you're slinging out Crown Royal and Coke. What the hell's wrong with you, man? Are you crazy? <laughs> You've lost your mind. <laughs> hey, Tosh, good to see you, my friend. Tosh is, is a really good buddy. If you're ever in D.C. and you want to go and get some really freaking fantastic scotch and including they specialize in a lot of good japanese whiskeys um i think it's called jinya uh i might be butchering the pronunciation there tosh uh please uh, put the phonetics in the chat uh j-i-n-y-a ramen bar it's uh, uh not far from a metro i actually walked to it from a metro they've got a really nice website they even show you how they make this stuff and when you hear ramen, don't be, you know, thinking that you're going to get just some bowl of crappy, you know, ramen from a from a, a plastic thing. These guys know what they're doing. It's 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 legit Japanese, well done food. I had some pork uh, uh, ramen with a, a nice egg and some uh, seaweed and and all sorts of crazy stuff that I, I enjoy. I, I like Japanese food, and uh, and he he had the Glen Coin like a cast strength there. He had a, um, uh, he gave me a couple um, really nice Japanese new ones. Uh, a Kaiko, I think it was uh, K A I C K A I K O, something like that. Um, that was really good. It reminded me a lot of the uh, Hibiki uh, uh, Yamazuki kind of. Uh, type of vibe, which you know you're not you're, you're not off. He also had a Chichibu, uh, a really good. Uh, it might have been the Stellar's edition of that or something. I remember. I'm trying to go off memory. It's been a couple of weeks ago, but it was uh, Kayo, yeah, Mizunura Cast Strength. Oh man, that was unreal. He's got some really good Japanese whiskey. So if you're ever in the uh, DC area and or near a metro station, you got to go by and, and and they have a tasting room that he just built there. Um, that's legit. Like it's it's off to the side. It's glassed off it's it's intimate it's a nice setting it's quiet uh there are people of course you know all over the place but i like the the bar a lot because it, it wasn't very loud it didn't have a lot of uh you know craziness going on uh with all the people that were there and everybody was the, all the the people working there were really nice this from the bartender to the waitresses uh tosh himself and even the owner came out and uh Greeted and, and it was it was a uh, and they're all uh, I think that the people most of the uh, management is actually from Japan if I'm not mistaken correct me if I'm not Tosh but uh, it seemed like uh, it was uh, felt very authentic we'll put it that way the BNC is just swimming up till it's working through my Dronic 14 version oak and McKellen edition three you're a bastard. <laughs> Well, I warmed up with uh, my own bottle after uh, you gave me a great sample of the Buna Havan Erina Grain. Um, that Buna Havan Erina Grain, that is great. And I went out and got my own bottle and almost just finished it. That big red sucker up there. Oh, I love that stuff. That's The Krog Vona was pretty good, but that Erina Grain, man, that, 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 this guy over here, that is... Uh, that was probably one of the best Bunda Havens I've had next to an 18. It was, it was up there and I, I still got to try the 25, but yeah, I got still going to get my hands on that in McCallum edition of three and the four. Um, as far as score goes on this guy, um, before we move on to the next one, it's damn good. I think Lee might actually have a spot on score for it. I might even bump it up just a, just a smidgen because I've had some fours that were solid, but this has got some extra voodoo that makes it stand out from your normal great space side dram, like a, a Ball Blair 99, which we, uh, we had 
that was really good. I was lucky enough to pick up that one myself for the group. And uh, that was a four star easy 4.25, I'd say. And this is on par with that, which is my, that was my favorite space side so far. This is, this is, is, is not as sweet like I like, but it's got so much other stuff going on that makes it so much more complex that I might dig it a little more on, on, on my mood. So this has got to be a 4.25, I think, to me. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking that's fair. Uh, uh, it might fluctuate a little bit, but I think that's where I'm going to leave it at now. Um, yeah, I wanna, I've never tried that uh, Ankladach, I think is how you say it. Really good. Great deal. 60 to 70 for one liter, man. That, is, that sounds freaking awesome. Thanks uh, for stopping by, Chad. Always good to see you. I really, really appreciate it. This is a, this is a definite buy, guys. Um, you can't go wrong with the price. I think it was like between at the most fifty to sixty bucks. And, and if that's that good of a price for this, imagine uh, we are both uh, Lee and I are drilling over that twenty three, um, and I, I, that's going to be on my next to do list. I think um, hopefully fairly soon. We'll have to see. Hey, Gregor, uh, howdy. Uh, anyone try the Gordon McPhil? Uh, Oh yeah, the OP, uh, the uh, Old Pony Twenty One, compared to the uh, original. I have, I have had both, um, and to me, I'll be honest. I it, it, if in a blind tasting between the Gordon McPhail version and the um, the original, I don't know. I, I think it would be hard to, to determine which one was which because they're both good. Um, is the Gordon McPhil as good as the original though, man, it's, if it's off, which it, it very well could be, cause I think I had that one at a, uh, tasting, which is always tough. If you sit down with a bottle, it's a lot more intimate and easier to get into the bottle and get every little nook and cranny out of it that you, that you really want to. Um, but I've had both and they both were at tastings. I think that the the original bottling edges it out, but ever so slightly. That's my take on it. Anyone else, feel free to, to comment if if you think I'm full of it. I don't mind. It's all subjective, but uh, I thought they were pretty damn close to uh, to both. Uh, Jason had a great oh Craig Ellicky for thirty six on sale, and I regret not buying two. I hear you, man. It's even good. Yeah, at fifty bucks. I mean, it's a it's a good it's a good buy. Um, yeah, if you like Talisker, Bobby, you gotta try this, man. It's not, it's not a, it's not an island, but it's damn close to that profile. If you took a space side and gave it an island, like a blend of a Talisker and like a really nice uh, medium grade uh, space side, like a Ben Ryak, and maybe put a little bit of the Talisker. Uh, uh, I'm thinking like the uh, maybe something a little lighter, make the sky or something. And put a little in there. I bet you that would be a really uh, a close mix, but that's just my guess. I've never tried it before, but it might be worth it. Hey, Ryan, good to see you from New Jersey. Yeah, we just got a lot of snow through here, and um, I'm in Severna Park, Maryland, which is uh, outside of uh, Annapolis, uh, between um, Annapolis and Baltimore, basically. Um, and we have had our share of ice. Uh, thankfully, we were able to telework today, so it wasn't too, too bad, but... Uh, anyway, let's get back to the next one, which I am eager to try as well. The Kragenmore uh, Distiller's Edition. The uh, the funny thing was, this is an older bottle. Uh, I have seen that they have a 2017 available, but this is a 2013 uh, distilled in 2000. Uh, it is, just strikes me funny that they're both 13 year, year olds, uh, double matured. And this is a uh, port cask influenced, which um, makes it kind of a bit different and hard to pull off. So uh, this could go one or two ways. It could be, you know, eh, it could be pretty damn good. I mean, I guess it could be fantastic, but I don't think they would sell it for 70 bucks if it was, you know, that fantastic. But I think it's worth a try. It has a really nice color. I don't know about the coloring. 
Uh, let's take a look and see if they say anything about it. Um, port gives it a nice, you know, purpley pink kind of hue uh, naturally, so they probably wouldn't even need to uh, do it. This is owned by Diageo, though. I don't know uh, how those guys decide when adding, so they probably might have a little bit, but it's hard to say since they don't really pop it anywhere in particular. So I usually go by the, uh, if they don't mention it, they probably do. But let me take another look and see. Uh, Distiller says these are port wine cask, which we knew. Uh, it is often you'll find the Scotch whis whiskey finished with port wine cask, but that's just what is done here. The port wine cask or pipes, as they call are called, are much larger than the standard barrel with the former yielding close to 500 liters and the latter only 120 liters. Port wine provides a fruit filled profile and present a pink tint to the dram. So that kind of goes with it, but um, this is a little darker than pink. So I'm thinking it's probably a little bit of coloring because they don't specify. Uh, at 40%, it probably is chill filtered. And that, the 40 is kind of making me nervous. That's uh, not such a good thing typically. Um, since it was a little more than the regular 12, I thought this might be a better option to try. But now I'm kind of wondering if I should have just stuck with the standard, you know. Uh, but I'm not afraid of trying some, you know, different kind of stuff, especially if there's a, a unique cast to, to get. And if it's not something you can easily find, and I've never seen this anywhere. Um, but that's really all the general information they give you. So I'm going to I'm gonna say it probably is most likely colored and most likely chill filtered. Uh, at 40 percent man i don't think we're going to add anything to this i didn't add anything to that 13 yet i might go back and and do that later just for lee because i know he's wait he's waiting around for that <laughs> oh my the port is there but it's not as is prevalent it's not as is as, as deep as i was hoping but the abv uh is probably why it's uh, a little little runny but it's got some thick legs huh it does a quick taste to let my nose get a little more mm, okay now we're talking Raspberries are coming through more now. Some smoke. There is some smoke in there. No peat, though, but that's okay. Well, maybe a little bit of peat. Yeah, there is some. There's a little peat action going on, which I, that's probably given that 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 subtle that smoke, a little barbecue. That's not bad. And this is also a space side, uh, ironically. And this actually feels more like an island. Not not as 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 pe nearly as peaty as an Isla, but it has some smokiness that would be up there with like um, a Nougadal kind of a, 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 an action. More fruitier though than Nougadal, not as smoky, but there's some smoke and there's a little bit of fruit too. Hmm, that's not a bad nose. It's just not much more. Maybe some, uh, I know it's, it's strange to say cream, but there's some like nice vanilla cream notes in there on the top. Hard to pick anything else out though. I mean, it's, it's mostly going to be all fruit and uh, this one with that smoke. Maybe some, um, if you really dig deep, maybe some chocolate notes. Raisin, figgy, darkness in the back. You got to really dig deep, though, in this one. I think it's the, the 40 ABV makes it really tough sometimes to get, get down to the nitty gritty. It's, it's sad because I'm getting a lot of alcohol, you know, so some going so deep in there, but with 40 ABV, you know, it's not that high. 
But I mean, it's good. It's good. It's not bad. It's just kind of funny how you have to really have to work for it. Mm. Mm. Some subtle spice, but nothing, nothing major. The spice level, and this one's a lot higher. This spice level is there, but it's a, little, it's more of a black pepper. There's not a white pepper on this one. Little black pepper. Mm, okay, now the, the the raspberry blueberry compote really is coming out. That part's nice. Thankfully, not dry yet. I'm not gonna say that because I took it back on this one. This one got drier as I went more into it. I do have one beef with this. I'm gonna save to the end. Smoke is there. The flavor is good. I mean, the pepper is is getting more intense. And that the, the two things I want to knock this one a little bit for, also along with the ABV being so low, the black pepper is 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 almost pushing out the nice fruit flavor that's there. I wish it was more in my face, like uh, some of these pork casts you can get. And a little more creaminess, a little more of that. This is more of a spicy black pepper with some subtle, nice, you know, raspberry, blueberry going on. But it's really thin. It doesn't have a even a medium mouth coat. This this liquid is uh, is extremely thin, and I'm sure that the 40 ABV is probably part of it. It's not a bad flavor, and there is this nice kind of a, a subtle uh, ham um, pork, actually more of a pork. I'm going to take the ham back. This is a pork, pulled pork barbecue in the back for a second, but it's so fast, and it goes to the fruit and the smoke and the, and the big black pepper is in your face, and it, it does have a nice... Um, a pork finish to it, which I do like, and it is it's on the longer end. It's still, it's still a little. It's it's so wide spectrum and it's so quick from go from A to Z that you're liking some of the stops that you're making, but you're going by through it so through it so fast that you don't get to really appreciate all this stuff you're getting along the way. It's, that's what makes it kind of a. This is more one a little more frustrating, I think, than. It's not unenjoyable. It, I still enjoy it, but I really gotta dig and I really gotta like grab at notes when I'm I'm going by. Mm. Oh wow, Keith got his. It's on the train set. <laughs> hey, Cartoon Face, good to see you. Mose, I'll oh, thank you so, so much for stopping by. Any floral notes in this guy? Hmm. This one, I'm going to say no to floral, but yes to herbal. This has got a little more of an earthy tone to it. This doesn't have a lot of the lightness. Like this one was a lot, uh, had a little more balance with the light floral notes to it. This guy is darker and the thinness is making it so such a very fast ride. It's it's and for 13 years I'm surprised I mean they did get a lot of flavor and I guess I shouldn't say for the 13 years I, I thought they'd get more because they did get a lot but the ABV is what's killing the experience, I think, of the Kragenmore, which is really sad. If they had this sucker at this 46%, I think they'd have a winner. I think that's where they failed themselves. Um, it's so sad because distillers' editions are hard to find. They're, they're really a treat. Um, and this is still a treat. It's just not as good of an experience as this guy to me. And it's kind of ironic that this one was twenty, you know, twenty to thirty dollars more. Um, it has more of a specialized cask, and you still can't get that, you know, 
bread and butter that you're looking for out of a well-rounded complex whiskey. And the ABV is extremely important. And I hope that the guys at Diageo are listening to this. And I don't think they do because I only have like a couple hundred subscribers. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, please tell your friends if you haven't. Uh, I'm not like selling anything, but I am trying to get a well-rounded experience out to people and, and try to, to help some of these guys that do make whiskey make their products better. I mean, that that's just, I think part of being a good consumer is what you do is you tell people, yeah, I like it, but this is how you can make it better. And, and if they can find, can find a way to up the ABV to 46, baby, I think they'd have a really, really well done. Then they would be a 4.25, 4.5 whiskey. At this point, even though the finish is long, I do like that a lot about this dram, and I do like the complexity of it. The experience is way too, sh like the, the, the quickness through it is way too short. Um, and uh, I'm gonna have to, I think, give this a 3.5 which really kills me because it's, it's got potential. It's got so much freaking potential. And uh, yeah, Jason's just saying the 40% bottlings aren't really aimed at this crowd. Yeah. I think that's, that might be part of the problem, but the sad thing is, you know, for 70 bucks, I expect this experience, you know, and it's like switcheroo here. I had to spend more for this experience when I'm really looking for this one. <laughs> and that's the sad thing about it. And the only difference holding this back from being like this is a couple, you know, percents of ABV. Uh, and, and they, um, if, if they could like find a way to cater to both, they would have a bigger marketing, a bigger, um, uh, client base that they could sell the product to. Um, I want to be on board with these guys as much. I want to like it, you know. Um, I do like it. I just want to like it more than I than I than I'm getting out of it. So I am not going to shy away from these guys. I think Craig and Moore has uh, a good taste. Um, they evidently do know how to make a complex whiskey. I'm just going to wait. Next time, do a little more homework before I go ahead and buy something and definitely check out the ABV and not just go for, you know, distiller's editions are usually really well done, really, uh, you know, on a higher ABV, like a Lago Volan, uh, dawani has got a nice distiller's edition, I hear, Glen Kinchy even, um, Kalila, you know, some of these uh, are, are supposedly better and... Uh, the, the lower ABV is the only thing that, that really, but it's such a big change when you go from 46 to 40, as far as the, you know, it affects the thickness. It affects the, the, the length of the taste. It affects so many things that if they could just change one little smidgen of it, I think that would be, you know, but 40% is challenging enough for most casuals, and there's a lot more casuals than super geeks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from. I'm just surprised that that most folks, and I'm not saying you're wrong, because I know that that 40%, you know, 80 proof stuff shells, sells off the shelf like, like hotcakes. But if you sat down, I mean, maybe because I'm a bigger guy, I can, I, I, I can, you know, drink through some of the stuff easier at a, a higher ABV, but uh, if you gave me a glass of that and then a glass of this, Brian in, asked me which one is, you know, overall a better quality whiskey, I'd be surprised even for these guys that are only dealing with the 40s that they wouldn't pick this one uh, over it. So Ryan Richardson saying, I look to uh, independent bottlings for more Craig and more for more ABV. I'll tell you what, this is, this is a good segue. Uh, Tosh, I'm not sure if he's still around, but uh, Tosh and I went to a, a local, uh, he uh, invited me to go to a whiskey extravaganza here in DC. And we got to go and, and had some really good whiskey all over the place. And the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society was there. They had four bottles. 
two of them being really good, two of them being so-so. The two so-so for me was one was a local Oakland Indian um, edition, a newer one that they were trying to do. And they also had a, a time-based whiskey, very herbal, and it was a Glen Grant. And it was like, it was, it was okay. It just was a little too herbal for me. But the two winners, one was a, a Lafroig, which was, I think was 24 years. And the other one was a Kragenmore. And it was awesome. It was a raspberry compote perfection. It probably was at least 46, 48. It maybe might, might even been in the fifties. That thing was the best whiskey. I think I had all night and I had some crazy stuff that was over 25, 30 years old. And, um, I think that was the star of the entire show was that, 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 uh, compote, uh, raspberry whiskey from Cragmore through the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. And that tells you a lot right there. So you're, you're on, uh, you're right. You're dead on when you talk about independent bottlings. I, I think I might have to do that myself, Ryan, to try to get some better, um, up AVV flavor. Um, uh, see how we, we go with that. Good to see you, Santa. I uh, knew you were back there and somewhere. The IBs are still most of the time. Yeah. IBs to me are, are tough though, because I've been so burned by some of these guys. Like, um, I mean, in the, and I've, I mean, I've had a couple good experiences from, from independent bottlings, but I've had more rough experiences from independent bottlings than great ones. Um, and I've tried everything from Gordon McPhail's, McPhail's, you know, the connoisseur's choice. The uh, Barry Brothers, um, Alexander Murray, McPhail's collection. I mean, I've I've tried a, a, a few here and there. I, I still need to get into. Uh, I have I do like exclusive malls. They they have great uh, versions of independent. If they have a Craig and more, I probably will try that one before I would try anybody else's. Um, and I've heard Senatory is pretty good. I haven't tried them yet, but I have my eye on a couple bottles of Clela. Maybe I might try. If you've ever had a, a, a bottle of uh, Kalila from Signatory, let me know if you thought it was worth it. Um, Bowmore is another uh, distillery that uh, I've had a love-hate relationship with, and I've only done distillery bottles. I have heard that the independent bottlings are better when it comes to um, the, um, the, you know, the Bowmore. I've heard the independent bottlings are, are much better. Sorry, I was distracted by his comment. Uh, he says, man, look at you. My... Scott Marshall Society Cragmore is pretty disappointing. Not sure why they bottled it. Jason, tell me if this is the same. Uh, I, I can get this real fast. Give me one second. I just want to see if this is the same bottle uh, number that you've got. Let me think here. Um, if I got a whiskey, Travagans DC, I'll pull up the pour list maybe if they're, they might be down. That sucks. Come on. I was able to pull it up earlier. That's sad. Um, come on. One second. I'm gonna try one more time here. Let's see if it pops up because I it gave me a couple of errors and now it's actually trying to load. So we'll see if it's the same number. I'm just curious. Well, this time it's not even trying. I hope I didn't like break their uh, maintenance or something. <laughs> that would be my luck. Nice brother, share some pics on Facebook. Uh, like this, you're hooked. Like me on CS. Is that cast strength? I've taken it. I am too. If you're talking about cast strength or single casks, uh, cast strength to single cast too. I mean, yeah, and that's. That Balvenie stuff, man, got me hooked on uh, single barrel or, or casting type of uh, options. And, and yeah, it's hard to turn back once you've uh, tried that. Let me let me try to refresh this one last time. Come on. If I get that, Jason, um, I'll give you the number. I think that uh, if it, I don't think it's the same one. If it was, man, I'd be really surprised because a lot of people in Tosh uh, and his buddy that was there with me um, that tried it, we all thought that that was like the star of uh, the show next to uh, the Highland Park, uh, the Dark 17, which was really damn good too. 
which I've had a couple times now. Uh, Lee G was with me the first time I had it at a tasting, and then they had it at that one. I was like, oh, this is definitely uh, consistently good. So that was a that was a good uh, option. Mine is oh, stern ginger and syrup. No, this was actually called compote something. I can't remember the actual full name yet, and I'm hoping that this loads at some point. But at least I know it wasn't the same uh, the same offering. But but don't be. Uh, yeah, I'm still having an error and connected to the database that they have, so I'm gonna have to drop that. But um, no, no way, it's the same. Yeah, um, take a look when you get a chance later. When the it'll probably be back up here in the next uh, hour or so. If you're still awake, if not, try it tomorrow. Do a search for whiskey extravaganza dc go to the dc pour list they'll have four of the scotch malt whiskey society bottlings that they offered us and uh look at the one that uh has compote in the title and that'll tell you which one it is and you have to get your hands on it It was a little i think it was like 150 and it was extremely well worth it man it was like top notch one of the best whiskeys i've ever had kind of i mean i was like damn <laughs> and that that made me think think that this was going to be hella good when I was uh, taking a look. I just made the mistake of not looking at that 40% before I dove all into it. But uh, it's, you know, it's okay. You, you can't, you can't like, I mean, you can look for everything, but you can't catch everything when you're looking and you get your eye on something and you hear, you know, good things about it. And you're like, okay, this is up my alley. I like a port. I like a good cask. It's a, you know, a well-respected distillery is a distiller's edition. And once you get rolling and if you don't dot all your I's, cross all your T's, you get thrown off the loop and, and this kind of thing happens. But, you know, it's – it's. I learned that I got to take a little more time when I'm looking at this stuff. But it's not a, a, a purchase that I, I, I'm, I'm regretful about at all. It's still a good experience. 3.5 is hard to, uh, to get some time. And uh, I've had a lot worse. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Some of those independent bottlings for Glenn Ward, uh, Gervon, uh, Milton Duff. Uh, uh, I, I could go on and on and on through our voyage through Scotland. And some of the grains, man, are just not my cup of tea. Uh, and some of the other stuff, uh, Lee said ninth. Filled hogshead that gave driftwood. Oh, that sounds horrible, man. This one is from what it must have been a ninth fill bourbon hockey. <laughs> that is bad. Oh, did you imagine that trying to drink a whiskey that was like filled nine times? <laughs> God bless. I'm going back to the to my buddy here just for Lee since he stuck around. I knew I knew he I knew he couldn't leave unless I uh, you know took a little a couple of drops of our friend Iska if you know what I'm saying. Anybody know what Iska is out there? <laughs> oh yes, just a little dab will do you. Just a little drop. I put more in the back of the water glass than I put in the uh, in the dram. <laughs> Yeah, Rob's saying he's been really lucky with independent bottlings. What are, what are some of your favorites, Rob? I'm just curious. Uh, mine are Creative Whiskey Company, also known as CWC, Exclusive Malt, same same company, which uh, recently bought by a Japanese distillery. I'm kind of sad. Buy them if you can find them. Um, thankfully, my place has got a boatload of them left that I'm going to try to snag as I get, as much as I can over time um, before they're sadly all gone and never to come back again um senatory i've heard it's good um uh, never had a good time with berries as under murray i've had a, you know one decent bottle it was all kind of okay uh haven't been much on the classic cast guys um didn't have a good experience with that um Thomas Sears choice was 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 a bad deal with the stroth mill it might just be the stroth mill of the distillery just might not be my thing but I'm just trying to think of some of the ones that uh, I've had very few uh, good experiences. Lee G is, is I'm sure can, can say the same. He's uh, had some um, run-ins with some independents like I have recently. And we're both like, uh, if we can find a, usually if you can find a distillery option, it's better. But, um, 
you know, sometimes, you, you know, like, like the Balmars I have are better than the independent, but I got to try it out. Someone dumped, thumbed this down. What the hell? It's probably Daniel. That guy, man, you got to take him. You got to take him out. <laughs> That's okay if I get one. If I get a bunch of thumbs downs, man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be sad, a sad panda. <laughs> that would be bad. Give me some thumbs up before you guys leave, if you don't mind. I appreciate it. Well, I put a little water on it just to see, you know, if it would bring anything else out. Back on the uh, Kregeliki uh, 13. Uh, it actually, it, sad, sadly for me, I uh, kind of I'm painted for it. I'm sure Lee's laughing, but um, it's, it's just a little, little too floral forward. <laughs> really burn. It really brought the sawdust hay kind of straw action up, which is not what I liked about the dram initially. And thankfully, I waited till I had very little left before I put the water in there. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. I just had to give you a hard time. You're right, man. If someone if someone put a, a thumb down on me, I think they should have their thumb amputated. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> Don't sweat the thumbs down, brother. Just promotes the channel more. How the hell is that possible? <laughs> I thought the thumb down was a, was a bad deal. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> that's not that's not promotion. <laughs> That's like demotion. <laughs> and you're a teacher. <laughs> Centaurs usually saw that always roll the dice with independent battles. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I was uh worried about. Nobody bats one thousand. Yeah. That's that's the that's that is very true. Mm. Palette wise though. It, it it somehow I'm not sure how this is possible brought a little like sulfuric notes up I guess because it brought some of the spiciness of the white pepper down it's a spicy dram but uh not bad I mean kind of it kind of gave it a little bit of a little I mean it's not as near as funky as Ben Nevis but it gave it a little bit of a touch of a of a little bit of a sulfur sulfuric thing going on As far as the algorithm goes, it's considered uh, interaction. Oh, okay. I, I guess that's what Rob's talking about. It actually prompts you into the YouTube advertisement wheel. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll take it. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll take what I could get. It's taken me a year to get 200 subscribers. I'm probably going to take another 10 to get a freaking thousand, which is sad. <laughs> but it's okay. It's hard to do a, an hour show and and people are looking for these 10, 20 minute reviews. I just don't have the patience to edit video and do all the sparkly fonts and pop up windows and, and all that craziness when I just want to sit down with some friends and enjoy a little round <laughs> or two or three if I have, I have a chance. You buy everything here before you get to. <laughs> yeah, you Canadians, man, you must have to like. No, don't thumbs down for the algorithm. Screw that, Santa. Let the guys that are that are uh, you know gonna just do it because they just want to do it. Let that. Let them. Please just let them do it. <laughs> that would be bad. That would be so sucky. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up are more fun, please, if you don't mind. Uh, I have a bad feeling when I get off this video and I take a little look. It's gonna have. <laughs> That's okay though. I, ha I still had a good time with it. Uh, hopefully the only person that gave me a thumbs down was a huge fan of the Crag and more and maybe they like a 40% and they just, you know, and maybe they don't want it to have a, a thicker viscosity. And that's fine. You know, and, I mean, that's what makes this hobby a great hobby is as long as you do your, take your time, you get into learning about it and you do your research to an extent and you, you know, you, you play around with it and try all angles before you make a judgment. And, 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 you know, you, you 
tell people your background. Like I'm an Isla Campbelltown guy. For me, you know, I do like a good space site like Bob Blair, but for me to get into it, it's got to be a certain way. That's just, you know, my, my palate. And I do this to let people that have a similar palate to mine know where they might want to venture off to if they're, you know, interested in a little Glendronic or a little Tomatin or a little Glamorangi or Brocolati, whatever, you know. So it, um, it all makes sense in the long run. <laughs> You could say the same thing about the distilleries. For select, yeah, Tosca Sky, El Ponte Navigator, some prints and examples of duds. That's that's true, man. But that's the entry level. I mean, that's their, that's how they get people into the game. Um, I was lucky when my first scotch was a smokehead, a regular basic old smokehead, and um, I was like, what the hell's in this? And I was told it was Pete, and I'm like, whatever Pete is, I'm I, I got to have more of it. So I started in Isla and never looked back. Uh, if I started with Lafroig Select or a Sky or a Navigator or something, I'd probably be like, I mean, it's better than bourbon, but it's it's okay whiskey, you know. I wouldn't have been like, you know, I think. I mean, the Select is is just so thin and. The flavor is just not, I don't know, man. Pete, for Pete's sake, is is right. I got to I gotta say, the, I think the best entry level of Freud for most people should be the quarter cask. That's just me thinking. And for the Ardbeg, it's either the standard 10 or the no, if you're more of a sweet minty kind of person. It's kind of like the menthol of, of Scotch malt liquor. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting ready to outlaw menthols can you believe that i mean i haven't smoked in years thank god but uh when i used to smoke i used to like a newport believe it or not um and now they're they're outlaw menthol cigarettes I, I i about had a freaking coronary when i heard that just the other day today or yesterday i was like jesus thank god i'm not smoking that shit anymore <laughs> but uh, anyway um yeah i mean um, it's hard to find an entry level on Islas though. Uh, Blindenhof is really easy. The 12 is go to, not peated. It's perfection in a freaking glass. Um, Springbank 10, you know, it's a little pricey, 70, 75 around here typically. Lucky if you get it 60 ish. Um, but still a damn good dream if you don't mind a little bit of a funk, a little bit of a, a little bit of that uh, Dunnage warehouse in there. Just catching up with some comments real fast. Speaking of does the HP Voyage of the Raven avoid? Oh, Lee, that sucks, man. Was it bad? Oh, that, I like Holland Park, man. It's I kind of get pissed with Holland Park because some of their stuff, like the 18, freaking fantastic, and even even a couple of like like the Val, the new Valkna, that shit's no that, that that stuff is good. Um, but like some of these. Some of these uh, NASs they, they've been coming up with lately, it's like, come on, man. I mean, I'd rather you, instead of you having 30 offerings and 10 of them being so-so, I'd rather you just give me 10 kick-ass offerings and, and call it a day. Jason started with Lafroy 10. Yeah, it worked out great. I hear you there. Cheers to that. Yeah, the water didn't kill this guy. The nose it killed a little bit, but the palate gave it a little bit of that Finevis, that Benevis funk kind of thing. So I'm not I'm not against that one. I'm not touching water on this puppy. Forty percent, man. You put water on that, you might as well freaking drink you some like <laughs> dishwater or something. That that ain't gonna be cool. Oh my. What little shakes have you tried? I've had a few. Um I've had this standard 10. I have had the uh, 18, which is sitting up there. Oh, glorious. And recently at the, the tasting, I was able to have the, um, it was a 19-year-old, same looking box, a wooden box like that, with a specific cask. And I'm trying, I think it was, um, I want to say Mizanura, but I don't think it was Mizanura. I think it was um, Manzanilla, I believe. Manzanilla cask, I'm pretty sure. I know it was a 19-year Lechegue. And it was spot on good. It was great. Uh, both Tasha and I were, were into it and uh, digging it. So I, I think that was a, a, a good a good deal. 
um, trying to think. Toby Murray is the the parent distillery. They also had a, a uh, the the parent twenty one year old Toby Murray there. That was a damn good dram. You had to be in the mood for a really intense maritime, briny, uh, like old Pulteney on steroids kind of thing. But it was good. It was it, we you could taste the age and it was like McAllen esque when it came to the age of Tobemori 21. I did like that one. He liked it a lot as well. Uh, and we both have different palates, but but he's tasted a lot of whiskey too, so he, he knows what he's doing. Um, I, think, I thought that was pretty damn good. Uh, so if you ever are, are looking around for something to try, you want something kind of old school that's not really overly dramatic, not, you know, and that's not overly marketed, Tobemori is a good... Uh, a good option, I'd say. Night, uh, Nightlock Ness, good to see you, man. Any uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society you can recommend for me? Yeah, Daniel, if you know, uh, I, I, that one, I, I don't know if you were around when I was talking about it, uh, Daniel, but that that compote one from Cragmore, let's see if that site's back up yet. I'll give you the numbers. That one was awesome. Let's see. Oh, whiskey. Uh, excuse me. Oh, come on. It might not want to load yet. It's a uh, look up Craig and Moore's number. Uh, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about, you people that uh, look up their numbers. But look up the Craig and Moore number, and it's called, it has got compote in the name. That's the one that they offered, and it was so damn good. About 150 American. It was, it was pretty spot on i have to say um I, I wish i remembered the last three numbers after the 37 if that's what you're talking about uh whiskey uh daniel but uh i just, just don't know uh bobby's asking just oh just saying orders to order the little 18 and 20 year old cast strength oh, oh my god that would be something else. This uh, 19 was a cast strength. I do remember it was a Manzanilla, I believe, was the, the type. But I do remember it was a cast strength, and it was, oh, man, it was gorgeous. So I think you'll be really happy with the 18- and 20-year-old cast strengths. I really do. I'd be surprised if you didn't like it because uh, their peat is, is for, for not being an Isla peat, it's spot-on good. It's really good. Rob, look for their Glentoshers. Glen Tolkers uh, bottling, huh? That's one I tried. It was a classic cask, and it was a young one. It was okay though. It was like a nine year. Um, it was it was it was okay though. It was uh, yeah, thirty seven. I just wish I remember the last three numbers to give you, Daniel, to look it up. Um, the site that I'm trying to use to pull up their pour list that we had. It's not functioning right now. It's probably because it's on maintenance or something. Oh, there we go. It just came up. Let me give you the number. Poor list. Uh, if you ever get a chance, look up 37.110. 37.110. It's called Spiced Fruit Compote. That stuff was gorgeous. That was better. And they had uh, a 29, which is Lafroig, 248. It's called Creaking Ships Lost in the Fog, 24-year-old uh, Lafroig, which was, was pretty good. But this uh, 37.110, man, was better and cheaper. Uh, it was like 150-ish, I think, American. It was damn good. That one, I, I, I'd be surprised if you didn't like it. It was gorgeous. That was the probably one of the best ones of, of everybody's. Um, there was a really nice, I don't know if people are going to knock me for being a Glenfiddich fan, but I do like this. They had this uh, under the table Glenfiddich Distillers Edition that was, uh, God, it was at least 15 years old, I remember. It might have been older than that. I can't remember a lot of details. I do remember it was damn tasty, though, and I was surprised at how good it was uh, being a Glenfiddich. So. Uh, that one is available. Uh, I would definitely seek it out if you got a chance. Well, thanks so much, guys, for stopping by. I do have to uh, tell her tomorrow, unfortunately, so I am going to be on the clock. <laughs> but uh, I uh, really appreciate you stopping by and uh, having some fun with a couple distilleries that don't get a lot of press. Uh, both, you know, both good. And I think I, I think I did them proper, you know, 
justice as far as you know going through the motions of both and uh definitely pick this guy up if, if you get a chance to this distillery is good this one i might pass on the price being around 70 is a little high for for 40 percent um I'm going to try another one or two and before I make a, a decision on them, I uh, might try to go with an, an, I don't know, just a, a higher ABV is really, I think, all I need on that. And I think we'll be in better, uh, better deal. Thanks, Bobby and Steven. Uh, Steven, did you get a chance to um, try the, um, the Lagavulin uh, Fischile team by chance? I'm just curious before I turn it off. And if you liked it or not, if, or if you're just going to hold it on to it for a later time, I completely understand either way. I haven't even opened up uh, my bottle yet, so I was just lucky enough to get a uh, sample of the same exact thing. So I thought, well, that way I can get yours out quickly and I can still uh, open it up around Christmas or so when uh, what was what my plan was. We'll see how that goes. But I'm just curious to see if you thought it was really good or if you thought it was so-so. I've heard really good things about it. Um, not yet. I'll try it before the next show. Well, don't feel forced. Don't if you planned on opening it, you know, later on down the road like Christmas something special. I completely understand. Uh, only if you if you really want to. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what you think of it because I've heard really really damn good things about it, and I'm excited to open it up. Uh, I'll probably cry after I do because I'll probably never get another lug of one eighteen ever in my entire lifetime. But it's uh, it's worth a, a shot. Thanks, uh, Rob, for stopping by. Check out his channel. He's also a good uh, reviewer and uh, good to see you, Lee G. Uh, I'll have to um, get you an email and, and catch up with you now that I'm feeling a lot better than I was before, and um, we'll. Uh, have to trade a couple bottles gonna be in uh, new york here on the uh, 4th of december and uh gonna be doing a lot of uh trying a, a lot of different whiskey uh hopefully a uh, train ride up there goes well i hope i'm not delayed get a chance to try a bunch of stuff before uh you know the, the actual event starts and uh maybe keep going after the event ends <laughs> Let's see how hopefully it's a good event. If not, at least I know there's going to be a lot of people with a lot of bottles that uh, will probably uh, be switching around and trying out. So, Slanchava, see you later.